very much, Sonia. It's a real pleasure to be able to be part of this launch, and it was a real pleasure to be a commissioner on this review. Um, I come from the uh, world of business and the professional institute. I run the CIPD as the professional body for HR and people development. So it's a very, very core question for our profession about skills, access to skills, development of skills, and so on. And as Sonia's laid out, I mean, I think we have come into this report in a context where it has never been more important that we address some fundamental challenges about skills provision and about balance across our educational system. And those have been very, very big questions for us as commissioners throughout this report. If one reflects on one or two points, uh, first of all, that many surveys have shown that most businesses say that they suffer from a lack of skills. There was an open university report last year that indicated 66%, two thirds of organizations said that they were suffering from a lack of skills and that three in five business leaders as a result of that said that was hindering their ability to execute strategy and to be agile. So these are fundamental business questions. And what we have seen also, sadly, and Sonia touched on this, is an underinvestment in business, uh, and I'm particularly pointing at business this one, underinvestment in the workplace in skills development. Now, hence, as we look ahead and recognize that the future is going to demand even more that we upskill and reskill. A recent CBI report based on McKinsey data published last week estimated that nine out of 10 workers in the next decade would need upskilling and reskilling. Now, that might sound a bit alarming to some, but the reality is actually this points also to this point of lifelong learning that we all need to keep our skills current. Um, and that we haven't been doing enough for that, both in the workplace but also crucially working with the educational system. And FE has this very, very particular part of the educational system, which is of such value to employers. First of all, uh, FE is very, very focused on vocational and job-related skills. And the good FE colleges have always worked with employers in helping to plug those skills gaps and helping employers to develop the kinds of capabilities in their workforces that they need. And a big focus and a big recommendation from the report was to strengthen those links, to create these employer hubs where employers are working closely with FE colleges in their local communities to help develop the skills that they need, building apprenticeships, building all of these other schemes which are proving of great value to employers, yet still we're not making enough progress on. So employer hubs, really, really essential. And therefore strengthening the connection between FE and employers, not just at the point of entry, but right through the development of skills in the workplace. Um, secondly, you know, I touched on already this notion of, of community. So many businesses, I mean, we, we sometimes talk about skills mobility. The, the real reality of most workforces, not just in this country, is that particularly, or maybe to put it in a different way, unless you really are at the high skills end and you can kind of take your skills and travel, for the most part, People uh, want to know that they can get employment in the areas in which they live. And it would be a travesty if, if we suggested that somehow we should all be traveling around just to find the jobs that, that uh, sustain us for our lives. So the notion that FE is so connected to community, to building community skills and working with employers in those communities is vital. And that's what employers are looking for as well, knowing that wherever they are located, they can recruit the skills that they need in their localities. And that is also incidentally, I believe an important part of what a responsible business is. It recruits its people from the communities in which it exists and it recruits those people inclusively. In other words, all the, the, the different demographics of our workforces and all the skills that we need. So the final point that I, I, I'd also make is uh, an important one as well, that we have focused a great deal on technical skills and very job specific skills. Those are important, and FE, of course, can play its part in that. But there are also essential and core skills, which we all need. And it's been interesting to me in the dialogue in recent years with many employers and many HR professionals that so many employers have been talking about the idea of, well, I need to recruit on attitude and aptitude, and then I will develop the job skills that I need in the workplace. And, and if we ever believed as employees, sorry, as employers that we could recruit what I sometimes describe as oven-ready employers, employees straight out of the educational system, we can't. We've got to work with education to build those skills in the workplace, as I said. 
But the idea of essential skills is it is those very human skills, those skills of empathy, of teamwork, of collaboration, of communication. And those are skills that should be deeply embedded in education everywhere, and that we then have a more of a common language and ways in which we can frame those and help to understand between individuals, education, and employers about what those skills are. And I profoundly believe that FE uh, does build those skills well, because it is focused on a lot of its employability ideas, and these are essential employability skills. So, as I said, in the report, there are many very core recommendations that particularly call out this idea of connection with employers, working closely with them, lifelong, lifelong learning in a context. And it's not to say that all education is always just about employment, but this connection to employers in localities, in communities, working together with FE is such a vital part of this whole system and a very, very vital part of the recommendations coming from this report. And as I said, I'm delighted to be part of this and to support its growth. Uh, all the different ideas around funding, the development of the uh, workforce itself with an FE, they're all there, there in the report. And some very powerful recommendations, which I commend us all to help to take forward. So thank you, Ian, and let me hand back.